Noah is just one of those stories we think we all know. Everyone knows the outline of the story, but for most people, it's been such a long time since they took a good look at it, and an even longer time since they thought much about it. In this video, we are going to take that look at the story and find out where the story truly comes from. Would it surprise you to learn that much of the story is heavily influenced by a story found in Babylon? It's true much of the story in the Bible was borrowed from a much less known Babylonian story called the Epic of Gilgamesh. It's more than a theory, and it's pretty much a fact. Not only does the biblical patriarch of Abraham come from the Mesopotamian area, which explains why the stories were included in the book of Genesis, there are also so many similarities between the stories. It's easier to only look where the two accounts differ. In this video, we will be looking at those stories and seeing what we can discover for ourselves. Ultimately, we want to find the truth. What sort of evidence is there for a catastrophic flood? Although the story of Noah in the Bible is too long to quote the direct Bible verses here since it takes a full three chapters in Genesis, let us take a brief look to reacquaint ourselves with it. There are also bits and pieces about Noah to be found in the Jewish Apocrypha and Pseudepigrapha. This will allow us to fully see how it compares to the Book of Gilgamesh and other stories found in Mesopotamian tablets and then look for evidence of the Flood. The Flood story occurs in Genesis chapters 3 to 6. Now keep in mind that the date of when Genesis was written down was sometime in the 8th to the 3rd century BC according to recent studies. However, to sum it up, 10 generations after Adam and Eve, the earth had grown very sinful according to God. So, he decides to essentially reverse creation with a huge flood. However, God found one man he felt was worth saving, Noah, and he instructed him to build an ark. Inside the ark, he was directed to keep pairs of animals to help repopulate the earth. After 40 days of rain, the ark came to rest upon the mountains of Ararat, where Noah built an altar, and after a sacrifice to God, they made a covenant between them. In this covenant, humans could eat meat but not drink blood, and God would never again destroy us with a flood. According to the Bible, after the flood Noah planted a vineyard and got drunk in presumably celebration. One of the more interesting facts that is known from the Dead Sea Scrolls is that Noah's father was worried Noah was actually fathered by one of the Watchers, a type of angel which would have made him a Nephilim. Since we're seeking actual evidence of a flood, and there are all those stories about those who came from afar and taught us everything we know, that is a tantalizing little fact. Now the stories in the Epic of Gilgamesh and other tablets are very similar to the Noah story. Let us take a look at those so we can see just how much. The Epic of Gilgamesh was written around 1800 BC. Although Gilgamesh's alleged historical reign dates to around 2700 BC, in this epic, it's the Babylonian gods who decide to flood the earth rather than God. However, there is so much that is the same that very few people doubt it is the same story, or at least it comes from the same source. One of the very few differences is the number of days of rain. For Noah, it was 40 in the epic of Gilgamesh, it's just 6. Don't miss our video, Noah's Ark Found. The controversial discovery one of the even earlier flood myths that was written is the Mesopotamian epic of Adrahasis. On the third tablet of this epic, it contains the story of the flood. In this version of the flood, the god Enki stands behind a reed wall and warns of the god Enlil's plan to destroy humanity with a flood. Enki further proposes that Adrahasis survive it by building what was essentially an ark. Now, this story is also contained in the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is why we are only looking at it once. These myths are so very similar. In fact, Noah is the tenth patriarch in the Bible, and the hero of the Mesopotamian flood story is the tenth antediluvian king. So clearly, these myths were swirling around the area and were important enough to write down several times. Keep in mind that writing on clay tablets was no easy task too. So, 
These stories were important to them. Well, why were they so important? One thing they emphasized as we looked at was deference to God or the gods. However, could it have also been an attempt to remember a disaster that humans barely remembered? Keep in mind worldwide there are these myths. There are so many you can hardly count them. So, it's something that many peoples and cultures believed happened. In almost all of them, the flood was sent by the gods to destroy humanity. Also associated with these myths are the stories of people coming from away and teaching them the arts of civilization. Even in the extra-canonical books of the Bible you had the fallen angels teaching humans forbidden knowledge. So, this idea that Noah may have been fathered by a watcher, who would also have known such forbidden knowledge, is quite interesting. What forbidden knowledge would she have learned from her watcher lover, and passed on to his son if it was true? Although it's fun to speculate unless archaeologists find a table or scroll saying I am Noah, and here is my life story, it will have to remain a speculation. It is far more interesting to set Noah in a broader context, which sets him as a heavily borrowed from the Epic of Gilgamesh. Now the Epic of Gilgamesh is clearly much older than Genesis. The stories may date from the same time, but they were written down much later and then changed to fit the religious faith with their particular focuses. Now, as we saw, the reasons for the flood set forth in the stories are very different. One is that humanity is utterly sinful and unredeemable. In the other, we are merely annoying the gods. One explanation for this is the dating since humanity had progressed in the thousands of years between them. The emphasis changed from solely following the God's will to also being a morally upright person in that era. So that explains the shifting focus, but what about the actual flood? Is there any evidence for an actual flood? Floods during the last glacial period did happen periodically. Now what else do we know that dates to around then? The temples found in Turkey, Gobekli and Karahan Teep. There could be a link there. However, there are a few theories that are even more enticing theories we should look at. Shurapuk is one Mesopotamian city that was held by the kingly version of Noah, and they had a flood lair found when it was dug up that dates to 2900 BC. The geography of the Mesopotamian area changed substantially when the sea levels rose after the end of the last glacial period. As we have stated in previous videos, during the last glacial period, there was significantly more land available to settle that was rapidly filled with water. This area is much larger than you may think. The estimates of the size of that area show in Mesopotamia alone were several hundred kilometers more land. The areas above the current water level were rapidly settled around 5,500 BC. More exciting even still comes from the work of archaeologist Bruce Mass. He has postulated that there was an oceanic asteroid impact in the Indian Ocean during a solar eclipse. This impact would have caused a tsunami. According to him, this points to 2807 BC, which would be backed up by that flood layer found in Chiripic. It's like an onion with endless layers. In the end, we may never be entirely sure what caused these flood myths. There are plenty of floods to pick from. Maybe they all coalesced and are remembered as one. It would seem that the end of the last glacial was a strong candidate considering the global nature of the flood myth. What seems clear is that the flood that inspired these stories was vast enough and important enough that they were remembered. Not just remembered, but kept alive in some of the earliest literature humans wrote. For that reason alone, we should take a careful look at what they have to teach us about the past.